What's going on, guys? We're more here to bring us the first episode of the Sweet Talking Podcast. I've been wanting to do a podcast for a long time, and what better way than to start it with talking about my album? This podcast is going to be a journey I'm super excited to go on talking about just so many different topics I'm passionate about with, you know, my friends like Sam right here. Nice to meet you guys. And, you know, I just want to talk about, you know, my life, my career, and then, you know, sports and movies and film and music. We're just going to cover everything with the journey with the show. I've been wanting to do this for a couple of years now, trying to find the right avenue. And finally, it feels like... And the right co-stars. Damn right. And we finally have something that feels genuine, it feels real. And um, fun fact, we actually recorded a podcast for about the album <laughs> yeah, we did. four months ago, four or five months ago, that was two hours long. Was... And we pretty much said everything about yeah. the story. Um, that's not coming out. I still have it. It was fun for us. It was a good yeah. friendship moment for us. It was. It was a good conversation that just happened to be caught on camera. It was also really late at night. So. It was. So I'm excited to bring a more condensed version, I think a better version, a healthier version than what that one would have been. And so yeah, I'm just excited to kick things off with this show. I'm excited to see where this show goes. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. We're real trying to figure things out like does the green screen work? Does this table work? Does the, how does the mic work? You know, we're going to figure things out, so just bear with me as you know, we kicked, go on this journey. If I get kicked off the show, you know why. I don't know exactly where to start because the the journey of Sweet Story of Mine is one that went on for about a year and a half mm-hmm. now. Uh, and I felt there was no better way to kick off the show than to talk about what is my biggest project that I've done to this point in my career. To me, looking back on it, I just want to kind of give an overview of the whole thing. Sweet Story of Mine is the biggest creative endeavor I ever did, but also was my first time I felt like I made a mark as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, I had three unofficial albums with Uncovered, New Vibes, and Honesty. But this was the first time, and I kind of call it my first album, because it was the first time I really felt like I put a professional level body of work that I can be proud of and show going forward, no matter where my career takes, I feel like I can always hold on to Sweet Story of Mine and use that music as like a resume piece. Where before I, I couldn't. Um, and me and a lot of our friends listen to it in the car, like yeah. genuinely. So yeah, and cool. it's awesome to hear people be like, yeah, I love this song, I love this one, I love this one. And this album also really molded me into a different person over the past year. It's because kind of how we became friends. It really is. Yeah. And, you know, actually, how we became friends is actually part of. The story. The, sweet, the sweet story of mine. Yeah. So I think we can tell that story without yeah, that's a quick too one. far. So yeah, 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 so you can take it away. Okay. So um, for our school, we have this like big like conference thing twice a week that we had to go to when we lived on campus. Yeah. We, you know, n- neither of us wanted to go. Like you, you never want to go to a school assembly. We found out that each other were on our hall and we were classmates and stuff. So we just went and stuff. We didn't really talk much. It was just somebody else that didn't want to make you like just fall on the floor. One day it was particularly slick after that because it was raining like pretty hard. We got on the bus after this kind of like meeting thing. We were standing up like the gentleman we were mm. uh, holding the little mom handles the the par for me I uh, I slipped and like because the bus hit like a pretty hard stop and I slipped on some water that was under my feet and almost like landed smack onto this poor girl and will uh, snatch the end of my backpack and I was like floating for a second in front of this person and he pulled me back up and a superhero we, moment yeah we've been friends ever since yeah and after we got off that bus we were walking back to our hall and i told him hey i'm about to go hang out with this girl mm-hmm. and the girl being the sweet story of mine person um yeah this this journey is really an encapsulating one there was a lot of life decisions i made in the span of this project from the beginning of its writing phase to its production to its release both yeah. releases that have Influenced my life for better or worse, and we'll kind of get into that as right. the podcast goes on. But uh, I want to kind of just start from the beginning and just kind of give you a l- quick overview of what the story is. So, me and this other person were in a similar group at the beginning of my junior year of college, and we just got along really well, vibed really well. And so I said, you know what? I think I might have feelings for this person, so I want to pursue those feelings. So. As I do, uh, and throughout this process, I kind of realized the way I process my thoughts is by writing music, and that kind of leads me to make decisions. So I wrote a song in September 9th 
of 2021 called Signs, which happens to kick off the whole album. Mm -hmm. And that song kind of showed me, it's like, I can't ignore these feelings that I have. I need to take action. And so I did, and things were going well for a couple weeks. You know, we hung out uh, that 23rd night of September. It's pretty much, you can take what you want from that. Uh, And then as time went on, I wrote more music like You Keep Me Going, Half a Man, Find the Truth. And I had this body of work and I was committed. I made a video around that time, that year I was releasing my single Stay. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am not making an album. It financially doesn't make sense. Logistically doesn't make sense. Why would I make an album? Everything's a single. Mm -hmm. So I had this body of work and I'm like, oh, signs, killer single. You Keep Me Going, killer single. Find the Truth, killer single. Half a Man. That's not a single. That has yeah. no single capability. So I knew at that point, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to keep writing music about this situation, but I I do know that I like Half a Man, but it could not survive as a single. So I kind of brought in the idea of, I'll do an EP, a love song EP. So that's what I moved forward with. I was kind of like, we're just going to keep writing music and whatever comes, happens. Me and this person, you know, we were still talking for probably about a month and a half to two months. Yeah, it was, it was a good little bit. It was a good little bit. And then we just kind of drifted apart and... Um, it was more one-sided than the other, but, and then eventually communication just kind of broke off and it was around the same time my grandfather died and I just kind of confronted everything all at once on that drive home. My grandfather died. I was like, you know what? I'm about to be in a really bad headspace. Let me just clear everything, you know, put everything out there, leave nothing on the table as find the truth says. Right. So I sent an audio message and I just laid out everything. Never heard back from that. To this day. Um, yeah. And there, there's there been a little bit of... There's been a little bit of turmoil. Say, yeah. And we'll, we'll lightly touch on that later. So when that happened, I was like, okay, whatever. So I had to week back home with uh, my family. Mm-hmm. And that, that definitely helped at that time. Yeah. Um, yeah, you were... That was that was a rough week. I mean, was. very understandably so, especially mm-hmm. with your grandfather. But then, yeah, I remember you came back and you were like, dude... Or you texted me, but then you came back and kind of confirmed it. You're like, I wrote, how many, it was like eight songs in seven days? Yeah, so when I came back from that week with my family, I just had a bunch of music on my mind. Because I told my family, I said, my grandfather, I was kind of ready for that. I had mentally prepared for a while because he had been on on downward slope. So I was mentally prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for the other thing to also go downhill at the same mm-hmm. time. I knew it was not in a good direction, but I was optimistic that optimism died. With that, I was just like, I'm frustrated. I don't know where to take out my anger. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna write. So on the drive back, I started writing the song Communication. I wrote it while driving. It's a great thing to do. Typing yeah, in your notes I app. did it with the script. Oh, I didn't type in my notes app. Oh, dang. Unsafe person. No, yeah, it was fine, it was um, a highway. I was on cruise control, it's fine. Yeah, I was just... Uh, that's actually how I became friends with one of our other friends, Patrick. Um, we we uh, were like in this kind of film festival where you have to make a film in 48 hours, but we, we were co-writers on it and we wrote the film over the phone while I was driving and he was already at the location kind of writing it. That's really sick. Yeah. So we got back. So I got back that week and that whole week was just weird around school. I wasn't... I didn't feel really comfortable in anything, and every day I wrote a song, so I wrote Communication, then I think I wrote Sandbox, and then I wrote Giving You Up. I left hanging out with y'all one day because I had the course for Giving You Up in my mind, so I ran home and wrote the song in like an hour, and then it was the day the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer came Mm -hmm. out, and we were avoiding social media so we could all watch it together at once, so I took that time and wrote Christmas Right Here. So, if you've heard Christmas right here, that is an unofficial song of the album. And then I wrote Peace of My Heart, then Silence. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I had nine songs. And I'm like, holy cow, this is an album. This album ended with Giving You Up. I was like, one thing, I said, the only nine album, nine song album that I like is Silk Sonic. And I think nine songs is too short. At least hit double digits. So, I knew there needed to be another song after giving you up. We were about to go on for Thanksgiving and I told you one day right before I left, I was like, yeah, I gotta write one more because I just don't feel right ending it on such a bad note because I don't have any negative feelings towards that person where I said the uh, infamous quote at lunch, I'm nice now. Damn it. (laughs) And I just kind of became the, um, 
the motive behind the album is well and, yeah. and it was really cool because I, I remember I had been encouraging you for a while to kind of add a song that leaves it on that note as yeah. well and and that's how you came up with one of kind yeah and and I thought one of a kind was the perfect thing to end the album on because it's like it, it, it's like the five stages of grief you know yeah. like like after you kind of find out that something's not going your way you have denial songs like you know kind of find the truth in communication where you don't really know what's going on right. um then you've got like anger songs well i mean not it's not really angry but it's like that's kind of what i see next as is like kind mm -hmm. of what you have to tell yourself in that situation it's like oh like and you know especially to us like mm -hmm. we're being prepared for something better something like yeah um Saying, like, I'm giving you up. It's like, I don't want to give this yeah. up, but I just know I have to. But then One of a Kind is, and, ri and I mean, on the deluxe one, Anytime as yeah. well, kind of, is very, they're very, like, okay, we've reached closure, acceptance, and now it's, like, prime time to move on. Yeah, and that, and that's how I, and the album was capped at 10 songs, and I had to pick the title during that writing week of Sweet Story of Mine. Yeah. And I was like, you know, this title feels right. So in November of 2021 was when Sweet Story of Mine went into official production. It was mm -hmm. a 10-song album that next week, two days after I wrote One of a Kind, I'm like, I just need one more song to kind of even out the sad songs with the happy songs. So yeah. I wrote, this is probably one of the more painful songs to write because I had to kind of meditate and go back into an old headspace mm -hmm. of early on in the situation and wrote which has become one of the most favorite songs on the album in my head. Yeah. Because that song was me having to kind of go back into that time and like, how did I feel? You know, what was my emotion like in that time? And I had this 11 song album and I demoed the whole album that week. Mm -hmm. Like there was an entire version. I came back and I showed you. Yep. It in sounds, your truck, in the line of cookout. <laughs> yeah. It sounds completely different than oh. what you hear now. It even featured a song that's not on the album yeah, called Silence. Right. Um, which was, was pretty much communication part two. There's even the bridge, both bridges of each song is essentially the same lyrics. Mm -hmm. And Silence just didn't feel right. So I, that it, it stayed on the track list until early 2022 because after I wrote the oh, main album, we had yeah. Christmas Break, right, right, where right. I went on a new writing spree and I wrote Forced to Forget. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a couple of other songs that I don't know if people are going to hear um, that weren't about the situation, just kind of... Yeah other songs and then one song that you're actually going to be hearing pretty soon called Just Right mm -hmm. and then I wrote a song called Tied Up which we'll get into in a little bit and then we came back well no I wrote Scars and the fun yeah. story about this because I promised my buddy I'd tell this story we were on we were coming back from a Washington football team game me and my friends Nick and Joseph and we were riding in a truck Nick played the song Must Have Never Met You by Luke Combs in the truck mm -hmm. and I heard that song and I'm like that scars because I've been trying to hammer the idea for scars mm -hmm. for like two weeks at this point, and it was like whoever said that time heals all must have been a lie. And yeah. I knew right there, I said, My lyric is, and if it's true that time heals all, why am I still here wearing these scars? And scars is, wrote itself the yeah. next day in 30 minutes. I wrote that song while driving also at night on 295 coming from Washington, DC. I've never said I'm smart at everything <laughs> I do. And then we came back uh, from Christmas break, and I wrote a couple more songs about the situation, um, which included Next, mm -hmm. and a couple other ones that um, aren't going to be released. So I had a 13-song album, and just I, I don't think you told me that story about Scars before, but it actually kind of reminds me of kind of in the middle of, uh, I think it was like October or whatever, when mm -hmm. you and I had like really started to become like better friends and stuff we had a kind of similar experience listening to uh jake scott's overthinking yeah which definitely really, at the time actually for both of us uh really kind of hit hard yeah we definitely yeah. connected over songs like that in that mm -hmm. song and uh, i could show you a whole list of songs that are on the spotify playlist that really played their hands in it's, writing this album one, yeah and so we had this body of work and when i once i decided forced to forget next and what was it? Scars were added mm -hmm. to the album. I axed Silence. So it became a 13 track album. And I think it was around February or March where I was like, all right, when do I want to release this? Because I'm listening to the demos every day, trying to find out stuff to improve. And I was looking at like May 
or mm-hmm. June. And I was just like, ah, this is too soon. I really want to take my time with this. Yeah. And so I was looking at the calendar and I was like, well, you know that lyric in Giving You Up, that 23rd night of September? What if that was a Thursday? So that means it should be Friday this year. So I went and I looked in the calendar and we were on set of a feature film. We were, yeah. And I picked a date and I went, September 23rd, the album's coming out. So I knew... For almost a year, yeah. when the album was coming out, you came over to me immediately, and you're like, "Guess what? Guess what?" I was, I, I was so excited. <laughs> I was so happy, and so the album was now official production. I had a date that I was running to, and so everything after that was pretty calm and chill. I was just kind of taking mental notes on the album, and then summer came, and me and my buddy Jay were having a uh, catch up conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was like. Mid June, we were just talking one night about you know our own situations in life and over the past year, and it was the first time I really had a reflective conversation about that whole situation yeah. that wasn't kind of in it. And I wrote the song the next day called "What I Never Knew" because mm-hmm. it was these moments where I realized I learned so much about myself and how I operate. I'm thankful for the situation, and it was oh, the yeah. first time like I was thankful for the situation because I've kind of had like this really like asshole comment I kept saying a lot, which was. I'm fine. I'm making money from this whole situation, which was me kind of hiding the pain <laughs> underneath, which is kind of like, I'm hurting, but I'm making money. But now, that was the first time where I felt healthily looking back, and I'm like, thank God that happened. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, and like, you know, everything happens for a reason, mm-hmm. and everything is preparation for something else. Like, it, it's it's crazy the kind of situations you'll be put in that like God's leading you to somewhere else. It really is something like what I never knew, hmm. you know, cause like you can't foresee it. You can only like look back in hindsight and it's like, Oh, that kind of worked out to, so I've, I've always been confident for you that this is working towards something better, right. whether that's your album or like, uh, like cause your album already is something just fantastic that you've done. And this is a body work. Like you said, you can be proud of for a long time, but yeah. like just in life, man, yeah. yeah, and I'm, and I'm so thankful for the journey that this album took me. So now, we kind of now we're really heavy in production for the album, and the album production kind of got interrupted because I kind of went through this writing spree at the beginning of 2022, mm-hmm. where I started writing a bunch of like just kind of love songs that I was working on. Towards the end of the winter, early spring, I wrote a song called "Live a Lie," yeah. and it became this song where you were the first one to hear it and you were like this is a good song and I, oh it was incredible it that was before you recorded all of sorry spoilers that was before you recorded like re-recorded all of sweet story of mine and it was really just the first time i heard like this really like awesome confidence and vibrato and i think you got like a new recording software yeah, or something yeah we i uh, started using not garage band yeah <laughs> Hey, I mean, they sounded good before then, but then, like, Live a Lie, the first demo of Live a Lie was the first time in my mind that they, like, truly sounded professional. Right. And that, and I was so excited, and everyone's kind of telling me, release it. And I've always believed against a TikTok wave of music where you tease yeah. it for a long time before you release it. Mm-hmm. I believe if people want to hear it, show it. So right. I finished the song in, like, two weeks, filmed a just kind of on-the-go music video, and just... In three weeks, the song was out. Yeah. And I'm completely happy with it. Yeah, and it it was kind of like, this technically is part of the next era of music that yeah. hasn't even started yet. And it's kind of interrupting the sweet story of mine because we had just come off Find a True single release. A little trailer. Yeah. So it was, it was fun. And people were like, is that part of the album? I'm like, no. You could listen to it and be like, yeah, sure it is. But... It was never part of it, and I was never going to make it part of it because it wouldn't. Have, the album would have lost its authenticity if I had mm. done that. But what I did realize in that time was, okay, now we got to hit the ground running. Like, if this is the single, the album has to match Live a Lie in how right. I produce every song. So from June to August, I was heavy in just recording all the songs again. And in that time, I realized I want to make a deluxe version. This deluxe version was nothing like the deluxe version that they got. Yeah. For be- for it for much better. I was going to say, different. don't say for better or for worse. <laughs> um, so I knew I wanted three new songs. Um, so I was on vacation and I wrote actually four songs that week uh, called Mistletoe Woes, Anytime, Ghosted, and Small Moments. I wrote them four days in a row and kind of taking like an outside view. Like if someone told me the sweet story of mine and I didn't yeah. live it, 
these were songs that I imagined you would write off of it. Yeah. Um, Ghosted is kind of a fun EDM house pop song, and I wrote it that way because without going into details, I got ghosted, and then I ghosted someone. So I said, I can't be sad about it. Let me just yeah. kind of make a joke out of it. And then I said, how many, ad- how many uh, ghost jokes can I write into one song? And hey, then you learned. And then I learned. And then... Um, Small Moments was really fun because that was the first time I really got to address like little Easter eggs about the story. Mm-hmm. And then Anytime, Anytime is a special song because while it's written within the context of the album, it's not really. I went and saw Elvis and you see in every song he performs in the film, like the way his fans just gravitate towards it. Right. But that ending performance with Unchained Melody just struck a chord with me. And I'm like, I want a song that I can just go to the piano and play to my fans and just be like, no matter where I am in life, no matter where you are in life, I want to be there for you mm-hmm. regardless. Like, just because I might not be able to tailor... Like, if I'm in a arena of 10,000 people, I can't speak to every single one individually. But I want them to know that because they're there for me, I'm there for them. And I'm wishing the best for them. And you so, actually can yeah. call him anytime. Here's his mm-hmm. phone number. Yeah. <laughs> DMs, dog. But... Um, yeah, so that song was really special, and I knew I wanted to put it on the deluxe album, and I considered not putting it there because I wanted it to exist outside of the story. Right. But kind of like Half a Man, I knew it wouldn't survive on its own. Mm-hmm. It needed to be with a different body of work. Well, it, like, the kind of difference between that and Live a Lie is, like, that one really, like, fit, and I know mm-hmm. even at the time, like, without going into too much detail, you were telling me it's, like, hey, I know the situation's over and I'm, like, getting over it and stuff, but, like, if this person, like, were to call and, like, need something or just, like, even need, like, a friend, not even, like, it's, like, that you would be there for. Yeah. And so I think while the the song may not have been written specifically for that situation, it was very authentic to the situation. Yeah. And, like, Live Alive, which, and, and a lot of the future music, like, Just Right and all that stuff that are coming mm-hmm. out that... Um, are just about completely different things. Exactly. After writing those songs, now we're just head down production on the album. Every night I'm in my studio recording a new song, working on harmonies, working on ad libs, just trying to find every song. Because what I learned with Live a Lie was a song has to speak to me. It tells me what it needs. I can't figure it out on my own. Right. Because I can just throw everything into a song and it'd be overloaded. But I realized that you keep listening to the song, the song's going to kind of tell you Take this out, put this in. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you came to me, like, twice, three times a week, like, just adding these little bits of something to a song. And I actually, I really learned a lot about what, like, making music and producing music is like, and, like, how many layers truly, like, go into it and stuff. Because I've always, like, been very appreciative of music. I, I... like I love listening to music and stuff and I, I, I played the violin for a number of years but I never have made my own music and so right. it was really cool to get an eye not only into that process but just into you as mm-hmm. a person because again the like that was this is part of for me a lot of it is like the story of how we became friends yeah. and roommate and how we're in our apartment right now yeah I, I've yeah. always said like if this situation didn't happen but like the story behind Sweet Story of Mine I don't know if we'd be in this apartment right now because it just, the way life and God plans out your life and puts certain Mm -hmm. situations, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's amazing to look back on. And kind of like. changed a thing. Exactly. It's like, yeah, I went through this crappy situation, but I got the best body of work out of it that I've put in time to. So. Thought you were going to say friend, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. Um. But yeah, so now we're late summer, um, mm-hmm. about to kick off our senior year of college. I'm about, we're about to get increasingly busy because we're making our own short films and we're right. working on countless other films. And so I'm like, all right, the album's got to be wrapped before I go. Like, I can tweak things once the new school year starts, but the album's pretty much got to be done. Right. So I came back to school with a finished album. It was 14 songs. Mm-hmm. And... I think the only thing I re-recorded was I did Harmonies and Find a Truth yeah. for the bridge. And I re-recorded the second verse for Half a Man and part of a verse for Scars. And that was all I recorded. I also still, like, that. added stuff to it. Like, that's yeah. kind of what I was getting at earlier. It was, like, even just, like, the littlest thing would add so much to the song. And it was really, exactly. really neat. Yeah. 
And so the album was greenlit. And we're like, all right, let's go. September 23rd, here mm -hmm. we go. So now it's the countdown. So I started making like my own personal merch. I had a hat that I wore everywhere that said 92322, which was the smartest thing I could have done. Yeah. Because everywhere we went, I would get asked, like, what does that mean? And I got so many new followers and listeners out mm -hmm. of that. And I, so if any music people are out there, if you know your release date ahead of time, make a hat and just start wearing it because people will ask you what that hat means. It truly works. And I started making merch with a track list on the back. Yeah. And, you know, people in our groups were like, you know, when's the album coming out? Yo, I heard you're making an album. Mm -hmm. And it, it became really awesome. And then... This is when things start to hit the fan. So my distributor yeah. hated the artwork that we had, which was a newspaper clipping. And we were like, and they told me it was good to go. September 23rd comes, the album's not out. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, hold up. We, we had like a party for it and everything. We did. We celebrated. <laughs> like the video that y'all seen of me popping the champagne, like... Oh, I that, yeah, I forgot about that. That we were celebrating something where it only came out on YouTube. And... Uh -huh. I just got pissed, and I'm like, oh no, and Actually, the marketing for this album was kind of put on hold, I'm like, well, what do I do, I can't, yeah. the album's supposed to be out, it's the whole September 23rd, every bit. morning we woke up and we were about to head to class, I'm like, did it come out yet, and no, and, and the look on your face told yeah. everything I needed to know, and so I parted ways with that distributor, yeah. and joined a new one, and in 30 seconds, they approved the new artwork. And speaking of which, uh, Live Alive just got re-released under that. Live Alive just, um, distributor. I've taken down everything that was released from that distributor, and everything is, Live Alive got immediately put up with a new artwork, mm -hmm. um, staying Christmas right here, we'll be back, I can promise you Christmas right here will be back this year in time mm -hmm. for the holiday season, with a new artwork, brand new recording, um, stay will be re-recorded and released whether it's a single or part of something else, yeah. um, I fully plan to re-release it because I do still love that song. It Dude, just the will logo. sound so much better next time. Oh yeah, uh, the and the logo you had for it was absolutely sick. Yeah, so it's going to be similar to what you heard before, but much better and different, and more modern to where I am today with my artistry. This is what kind of kicked off a darker time for me in relation to the album. The album eventually came out the next Friday. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, the album's out, we're listening to it, it's sick. And then my marketing brain kicked yeah. in. And this is like some of the things I wanted to talk about in this podcast is kind of be open, and I'm glad that we are redoing this podcast because yeah. this wouldn't have been spoken about, but I made choices that I'm not proud of in that marketing. Um, I, I think it can kind of be best described as like, you weren't making things, you, you weren't doing things that were like, you never like tipped over that edge and stuff, mm -hmm. but, and because like, you know, all of us would have called you out on it. Yeah. And, and, and I think we did say some things. About, I, I, I did get some text messages yeah. and some calls. Um, but like, you weren't doing anything to deliberately be a tool, but yeah. you know, you like, there were some things that walked that line pretty pretty evenly. very close yeah. and there's a couple where i'm like and i was like oh no no one's going to get it it's just, it's just just like it's so it's so out there like no one's going to know and then people were like no we know and turns out like, people are a little smarter they're, than they're, you think they're a little smart <laughs> in the age of taylor swift where everyone's looking at every easter egg and everything you release but uh yeah so see with mine that'll be purposeful yeah i just i didn't do fun easter eggs for movies yeah and so it it created a dip because I was so high on my horse of releasing this album. I'm like, oh, it's fine. Looking back, not fine. You yeah. live, you'll learn. The, one of the other regrets I have from this album is it created my the, my best friend and my best enemy, which is a joke I like to use. Whenever we're uh, hanging out with people, I like to say, thanks for giving me something to write an album about. Yeah, anytime we just trash them in Smash Bros or whatever. Yeah, so um, that's people saying that people have gotten the idea that I target people when I write music, which is farthest from the truth. But I hope from this podcast you guys can hear that I write about my emotions and feelings. And, you know, sometimes we get a little immature with those feelings and we take them in the wrong ways. But, uh, you know, I feel like being authentic as an artist and just writing my emotions out every day is 
something that I just feel authentic and led to do. So, yeah. and so don't be afraid of being friends with Will. Yeah, don't be afraid. Be afraid of not being friends with Will. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Piss me off. Give it about a Sweet year. Sweet story of mine, too. <laughs> Give it about a year. <laughs> and check my socials. So now we're in October, and me and my friend Carlos are doing the photo shoot for the Deluxe album. At this point in time, the Deluxe album is still the original version. It has three new songs and a bunch of interludes. I was doing a shoot of my own. Check you out are. the genuine legend of Hud Del Toro this spring. This spring with yeah. a song from me. I was going to say, with the, it, 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 all full, full circle. We did the photo shoot, and the Deluxe album was originally slated to come out in November. Um, but we were still super busy in our filmmaking season, mm -hmm. so I was like, December. And then we had the photo shoot, and then we were having issues getting the film developed from mm -hmm. the photo shoot, because we shot on a uh, film camera right. for some of it, and so that was like, okay, December. They were still taking a long time. In this time, without going too much into detail, the repercussions of how I marketed the album the first time around... Yeah. came back around and it kind of just hit me in the face and I was like filled with like what do I do what why why this situation has been done for so long why am I having to deal with it again and I got and I got angry but also got scared it was scared and angry at the same time well and I remember you told me that a lot of that was just the fact that you didn't like really realize at the time that like things were taken the way they were. like like yeah. certain marketing aspects and so just the album as a whole was taken the way it did like like yeah. I, I remember you telling me like it was just supposed to be something that was personal to you and not like like is the you had mentioned taylor swift earlier like mm. a lot of taylor swift songs are like really kind of mean uh, mm. to uh to like whoever they're about or whatever right. which i mean it works for her like um she's made She's millions, made millions so. of dollars, and they're pretty catchy. So yeah. I, you can't knock her for that. But you had always told me that like what you wanted to separate yourself from that kind of writing was yeah. just intentionality, and your intentionality was never bad. It it's, was yeah, because my writing process is I don't know how to how I feel. I need to figure out how I feel. Let me write about it, and that's what I love about the album. Each song captures a emotion or a moment. Yeah, it's not like these overarching songs that talk about a period of time it's like no like how i felt this day is sandbox how i felt this day is forced to forget which is all these songs that i really love and it's such an era of how i wrote my songs and you're still going to get some music that's written like that and that's that's one of the really cool things about the album is that like through all the seasons that life takes you through there's at least one third of the album that should probably work yeah. <laughs> for you yeah so i was sent into a hysteria at this time of what the hell do I do with this album? Because yeah. we have a photo shoot. I remain loyal to my friend Carlos that we're going to release this album because yeah. he's put work and time into it. So the interludes got immediately cut. I'm like, because... You, wait, had you mentioned the interludes before? Mm -hmm. Okay. The interludes got cut. Um, if you heard me mention earlier in the podcast about a voice message I sent to her, that was the interludes. It was it yeah. cut up. And that would not have been a smart move. So... And I mentioned before a song I wrote around Christmas time of 2021 was Tied Up. The reason that song was never considered was while it was super authentic to how I felt about that situation, I thought it was too harsh and it featured explicit lyrics. Yeah. And if I knew if I was going to release it, I wasn't going to compromise and take those lyrics out. Right. So it was a big thing. I was, like, I was not going to do it, but I needed another song because I hate odd numbers. Which... Explicit lyrics aside, on the, actually the it was the night that you had the listening party with a few of our friends for the original, original albums of Sweet Story Mine. Um, you're like, well, I got this other one in the works, and I had heard it before. Um, I had heard it like a little bit before, mm -hmm. but not like the whole thing. And then a couple of our other friends, we all were like, dude, like that's your other one. You know, yeah. you got to put it on the album. Yeah, so I was like, all right, it's on, 18-track Lux album, here we go. And then the next week, funny enough, just like the last writing week, it was yeah. now Thanksgiving. So I went home for Thanksgiving, and I'm just angry. And I write this song called Peace, mm -hmm. which is another one of my regrets on the album. I love the song. I love the first verse, and I love the final chorus. Yeah. The second verse, 
I'm not the big, I'm not super proud of. It really captures, like, you can tell I'm just frustrated, and but it's a little too real. It yeah. kind of gets a really real. You're kind of like, oh, he's just saying how he feels right yeah. now, which I think helps the album, doesn't help where that situation was standing. Right. But then, but then, my baby boy was created. <laughs> The greatest song, well, not my, I wouldn't say it's the greatest, but it's my favorite song I've done to this point. Yeah. Um, I was frustrated. I'm like, why does the situation have to come back mm-hmm. around? Like, I just I wipe my hands clean of it. Let me get rid of it. And I said, I'm going to write a rock song. You did. And that's literally the exact words you said to me, at least. Mm-hmm. You're like, you know, I, like, I think I'm going to write a rock song. And I was like, you definitely... Wait, no, you hadn't. And I did, like, I kind of realized, because I'm, I'm a huge fan of, like, rock and roll. Mm-hmm. I've got REO Speedwagon, and I know David Bowie's not rock, but David Bowie, Greta Van Fleet stickers on this water bottle yeah. alone. Like, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, like, kind of just that vibe of music. And so yeah. I was really excited, and mm-hmm. I, I was definitely not disappointed by Player Cards. Yeah, so outside, I knew, I was like, all right, I'm going to write a song called Player Cards. I want to be this more abstract song. I knew it was like all right, we got to start with the chorus and the only lyric i knew going in was i wanted a dirty mirror line that's mm-hmm. the only thing i knew yeah and, i remember that and so i wrote the first half of the chorus while brushing my teeth one day mm-hmm. and then i wrote the second half of the chorus while waiting for my mom and my aunt outside of longhorn steakhouse <laughs> one day and then the chorus i knew the music so i went back home that night and i wrote the entire song and it was and it was a it's a very real song like I'm I get very real in it which is also why it's one of my favorites. Yeah. But it's also the first song where I just kind of get to unleash vocally and just be like, yeah. you get the bottom of my range and the top of my range, and it, I got to have a lot of fun because there's like the growl track, there's the rasp track, there's so much background vocals in that song that you don't understand. Like if I broke everyone down, which I might do in a future video. There's so much that went into that production yeah. of that song. And I came back from Thanksgiving break like, guys, I've created something mm-hmm. that I'm super proud of. So the album was, the deluxe album had totally transformed and it was now a 20 song, completely Which music. The funny thing about that was when it was like at like 17, when it was like six, somewhere like 16 through 18, I'm like, dude, you should, uh, I think it was 16. I, I think uh, I was like, dude, you should just write a few more and make it an even 20. Yeah. And then you were like, oh, no way. That's too much. And yet here we are. Here we are. And so then we, I told my buddy Carlos, I'm like, hey, we're completely changing the deluxe album. This mm-hmm. is what we're doing. He's like, sick. Uh, let's do it. He sent me a concept of what he had created at this point, which looks nothing like what you got now. It, it looks phenomenal now. And it, the old verse looks phenomenal, but mm-hmm. this one's just so much better. And it did good. Yeah. And it, it took some time to get here, and I kind of want to get some time past the new year for the new album to come out. And there was a point where we were both like, all right, this is our deadline. Let's, mm-hmm. February 17th is when we're going to do it. Because I was like, I got a whole crap ton of new music that I'm ready to yeah. share with the world. We, we move forward, and going into the release for this one, it's like, okay, the best way I can break this down is the first album's release was personal. It was a vendetta, whether I would admit it at the time or not. Yeah. This time it's commercial. This time it is purely for the music. While it shares the same 14 songs the other one did, plus a new six, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't even feel like the same album. It, no. The way it flows because I integrated the new songs into the album instead yeah, of they weren't all putting them at like, the end. Yeah. And so that whole album plays out differently. And I'd say before where it felt like I was telling you a story through the 14 songs. Mm-hmm. The 20 songs to me, the first time I listened to them all the way through uh, back in December, I was like, this feels more theatrical, yeah. which is which was, felt good for me because I'm like, okay, maybe this will create a separation yeah. and how I market it and how different it will be. And and I will say yeah. until the deluxe album came out, a lot of times, like if, if I was, if I had one of them stuck in my head, I'd listen to that one. But I, you, I would usually not, I don't think I ever put the like sweet story mine on shuffle not that that's like a bad thing or anything but just like it to me you're right it just felt like Mm -hmm. one story that you need like you needed to experience all at once yeah and then uh oh so far from the deluxe i've like picked and choose picked and chosen like a few you know if i'm like driving wherever Mm -hmm. and i got one of them stuck in my head so in my in your head (laughs) in my head Uh yeah it was super fun releasing this album and 
There were repercussions for releasing this version, but not in the same way. It wasn't for the situation. It was, I'm releasing the most edgy music because I am finally releasing explicit music, which mm -hmm. was something that I knew was going to come. It was a debate, for sure. I remember it having that debate. And it was just like, I never will compromise on a song I write and take a lyric out if it's yeah. personal to how I feel. I review every lyric I write, and there's lyrics that get changed all the time mm -hmm. in songs. But if it's like, that's authentic to the moment, I'm not going to cut it. Right. And, you know, it was a lot of conversations with uh, my parents and just kind of like, you know, if you want to stop me, you can stop me. You're the only people that can stop me. Right. That and, that and God. And that's like, if I, I mean, uh, a lot of conversations with them, a lot of prayer to him. I was just like, is this the right move? Because people will react in many different ways to this. And the vibe I got from both was like, we support you if you want to do it. We may not always, we may not agree with it. I was going to say, I don't but think God would ever tell you yeah, to curse. I don't think he would tell you to curse, but he was like, <laughs> he was like look, like we, you know you got to love support, which, whatever avenue you take. So with Tied Up, I was kind of flipping back and forth, but once Player Cards came into the picture, I'm like, we're full sending. Like, Player Cards to me would not work in and that. Honestly, like, as someone who... Right, like that kind of does the same thing. Doesn't really write, write with like explicit stuff. Of course, mine's like scripts and stuff. I I do respect like, like how you did yours because they're not like it. It's not just for the sake of it. It's yeah. it's for it's to get that extra little feeling. Yeah, that you can't get from like shoot or whatever. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. like it, yeah, it, it's. Because a lot of modern music, you know, de like just curses and stuff and yeah. says really nasty things for the sake of it. And the, I, one, the one thing I really feel with this was uh, I don't want to make those feelings feel desirable. Right. Like sometimes yeah. you hear the cursing in music and it's very much like, hey, look at me. Yeah. I'm cursing. I'm edgy. For at me, the risk of us sounding like 50 years old. But you know. Yeah. And for me, it was like, I want people to not want to feel the way I felt. I want yeah. them to really empathize and sympathize with the frustration and the pain that are in these mm -hmm. songs. And sometimes I heard someone say it's like, for better or worse, sometimes you're just in such a rush of emotions. The only word that you can say to just shout it out is that word. And, right. and it's just kind of an encompassing feeling. And the way I felt when writing Play Your Cards and when writing Tied Up, it was just like, I would just kind of sit back and I'm just like, Frick, man! <laughs> like, like, what? Like, why is all this happening? So then, I wrote it into the music, and it just felt genuine, and not everyone's gonna like it, and that's okay with me yeah. because it's me being true to myself as my, you know, where my heart lies, and me as an artist, and it's not, and it opens a door that going forward, you know, down, well, it's, it's yeah. an option, but it's not something I seek to do because I. I was talking to someone the other day and I said, I have about 50 songs I'm working on right now. Two or three of them have any expletives whatsoever in them and they're all very personal songs. Yeah. So I don't throw those words out there unless I am really trying to get a point across. Like, in, and I've heard a lot of the new music. That's one mm -hmm. of the pleasures of living with someone who makes music is I, mm -hmm. I get to hear and kind of give a little feedback and stuff early and I think that's just really, really cool. And I'm, um, I think y'all should be excited for the new music. Hundred percent. Not just as his friend, as someone who enjoys listening to music, like you know, ninety five percent of the world. Right. I I am really excited for a like a solid like few of them. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm excited for all of them because yeah. You know, but yeah, and another thing, like yeah, people aren't gonna people aren't gonna like it. People already don't like it. Yeah. But like. First of all, you've got a solid group of people that do. And second mm -hmm. of all, this is your first album. Well, it's not your first. This is your first, like, professional yeah. album. This is your, like, not even out of college yet. Mm -hmm. And you are, like, I'm not saying, like, you're, like, you're a superstar. You're ahead of the game. Like, you're already on a path. Right. You know? And so, kind of what I was talking to you about a few days ago, like, mm -hmm. even if, like, with Sweet Story of Mine... You're probably going to look back at it in five years and it's like, this was fun. I respect this, but I'm so much better now. Right, exactly. And, but that does, like, just kind of like how God, like, 
every situation happens for a reason. Like you needed to make this album mm-hmm. so that your future albums that you will create will be the way that they are. You know, because yeah. like I'm, you learned different things about mixing. You learned different things about like recording, about mm-hmm. distributing, yeah. and all that. Like all, even stuff you wouldn't even think of in marketing, especially. Yeah. Um, that like even if you made some mistakes in this one, like future ones will be better. Future ones exactly. will sound better. Future ones will look better. And I personally cannot wait for, uh, you know, every single and stuff and mm-hmm. the next album. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. Um, going forward with the music, I can promise you guys you'll get new music every month. Um, there's some months where you'll get a lot of new music, yeah. um, a couple, a few singles. Everything will be single Especially form this year. Yeah. Especially in May. And I think August is going to be our biggest months this year. Uh, but we, yeah, we're going to hit the ground running. The next body of work I've been working on for the past year and a half and kind of in tandem with Sweet Story of Mine. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited. I think we're going to kick it off with a really fun song with Just Right, kind of yeah. being that first post like breakup album song. I said, I don't feel Sweet Story of Mine is a breakup album, but others take it yeah. that way, and it's fully understandable, fully justified. So I decided that, you know what, let me do that typical thing and release that post um, breakup, you know, high on life, yeah. you know, let go with the flow type song. And which yeah. I mean, I think it even works for like something that you were trying, like, because you were trying to market the sweet story of mine as like a story of you know loss and acceptance and like mm-hmm. a missed opportunity yeah. and stuff. And so I think that like in a lot of situations, just right. While you know it, it's again, it's like one of the like post breakup like high on life songs. It's not necess- It's not a feeling that's supposed to be like desirable and stuff. Yeah. But it's just for people that are just like going through it and need yeah. a little high. And it, it also, it has an element to it where it's also just kind of about seizing the day. You know, yeah. you see an opportunity in front of you, take the opportunity because you don't, mm-hmm. if it feels right, just That's something that for a lot of people need to learn. Like, I know yeah. I've needed to learn it a lot in the mm-hmm. last year. You've learned it a lot in the last year. Yeah. Um, and trust me, as as a very chronic worrier mm-hmm. um, and, and, like, you know, like, worry and precaution is something I... Uh, deal with a lot and stuff just seizing the day and stuff i, I know i the like it feels so good and and you even though the outcome might not be what you wish with whatever it is with it's like life relationships jobs whatever um whether the whether or not the outcome is desirable the fact that you like you know said you know what and you did something exactly. is always going to be something to respect yeah that's that's what i really want people to take away it's just you yeah. know you know for me you know i'm very confident in myself but sometimes you yeah. still have those moments where you struggle like uh, i just don't know because i you know the repercussions and you know maybe things would be better if i just you know don't do it but you never you never make the shots you don't take and yeah. so you know for anyone out there you know just seize a day take those shots yeah and watch dead poet society yes and, and then, Robin Williams will tell you to carpe diem. Carpe diem, that's the way to do it. But uh, yeah, I, I'm just I'm super thankful for the journey that this album has given me. And you know, a lot of people say it's like, do you want this album to you know take off and be uber successful? I'm like, well, obviously, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. because I put a year and a half of work into it. But there, that pressure isn't there. It's mm-hmm. the way I see it is, I get to share this story, this thing that happened in my life. But the greatest part is now there's 20 songs of mine that people have to set a foundation for the music going forward. So, you know, like I said, everything's going to be singles now. And whether whether or not people like it, I'd say they're pretty sweet songs of yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not. But uh, everything being singles going forward, I want to give people make sure they had other music to listen to. Right. And make sure it was quality. So that's why I took down Stay and Chris right here and just re-uploaded Live a Lie under my new distributor. To make sure that it, I'm setting myself up for the best success, and mm-hmm. you know, this is only the beginning. I feel like I'm kind of being reborn as an artist with right. the deluxe album coming out, and the new music is super exciting. And you know, I've learned to never say never to making another album or EP. Um, it won't be this year. I can promise you that. Yeah. Um, I have a couple ideas for some EPs that I love to do because I believe EPs is where you can put a group of similar songs together mm-hmm. and release them. Yeah, you were kind of yeah. explaining your like little philosophy behind that. Was it last night or mm-hmm. the night before? It was. Well, I mean, I've had this philosophy for a while. Where it's like, well, the, yeah. when you explained it to me, like, yeah. but I, I think 
I really like how you do album like albums yeah. are all about like kind of one like all yeah. things to serve one thing and then EPs are a bunch yeah. of like yeah, an EP songs. doesn't have to have a purpose I don't feel comfortable making an album that doesn't have a overall main theme like right, right. I could read I could release an EP and it's a love theme but they're all different takes on love yeah if and I'm doing an album it, it needs to be, be coming yeah and it's like one over one overarching like story or feeling mm-hmm. or theme and you know I have some ideas that I want to do and that wouldn't take that wouldn't take my pressure away from other songs it's like right. just keep moving on with the songwriting process and we'll see what happens um, and you know I'll talk more about that if that ever picks up any steam going forward mm-hmm. but yeah I'm just you know we're finally closing the sweet story of mine chapter which yeah which is wild it's wild that that's again like going back to the first thing we talked about that's like, I have known you since, la- like, like when we started, like, to actually know each other was, like, right when Sweet Story of Mine was starting. So this yeah. album has spanned the entirety of our friendship, which I know yeah. sounds, like, cheesy and stuff, but it, it really means a lot to me because I get yeah. to see, like, listening to these songs now, it's just like, oh, this song, like, every once in a while the memory will pop up. It's like, this is where he showed me this song. Like, that's mm-hmm. cool. Like... I, I that was a that was a good night. We ate cookout or Taco Bell and then yeah. regretted it a day later. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, um, it was it's just really cool and I really yeah. appreciate being able to like hear a lot of the songs beforehand mm-hmm. and like almost feel like I'm like a part of the test audience and stuff. Right. It's, which is it's just such a cool experience, especially for like one of my really good friends. Yeah, so. it's, it's been really awesome, you know, just kinda of showing you the music along the yeah. way and really you know, a lot of our conversations that we've had, cause especially when the whole situation went down, you know, we had a lot of car rides because you were going mm. through something similar at the time. Yeah, we got and, some common ground. Yeah, so we just would just kind of just talk it out, and that's where a lot of this album was kind of born. And, you know, the uh, awesome birthday gift that y'all got me for yeah. my birthday of, like, it's a little clear plaque with the Sweet Story of Mine. Got to commemorate, man. Logo on it. a huge thing for you. It is, and I'm super excited to, as excited as I am to have released it, I'm excited to be done with it. <laughs> uh, it's It's been just so much fun on this journey, but I'm excited to just get started on a new journey and get to the new music that's, you know, just, evol- it's just an evolution of me as an artist. Right. And there'll be another podcast uh, in a couple of weeks where I'll talk more about that body of work. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I think we've covered the story pretty well. We did it in a much, much better, much more... Uh... Not only concise, but like coherent way than we did last time. Yeah. We were just talking. We were. We were just. We we're sitting on the couch, kicked back. We both had a mic. I had popcorn, and I my, didn't. And my... I didn't know anything about recording, so I was like holding the mic out here the whole time. <laughs> and yeah, we were talking back then. We were just talking, rambling, and now we're sweet talking. Now we're sweet talking on the sweet talking podcast. That I'm super excited that we're gonna be doing yeah. this every week going forward. Um, new guests every week. That we somewhere I'll do it solo. It will just to kind of depend on. If it's something like really personal, I want to share that week, or um, or who's not working on homework, or who's not working on homework, <laughs> you know, um, I'm just super excited for the journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. You know, really, you know, it's our first time doing this, so you know, there's definitely some moments that you know we're going to look back and want to improve on. But uh, yeah, I'm. I hope you guys stick around and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to like this podcast if you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that bell button down below so you're notified every single time brand new podcast is uploaded to the channel make sure to comment down below what you thought about today's episode and uh i just want to say thank you for inviting me on this thank i'm you. i'm well, thanks for coming on yeah i'm really honored that i get to be the one to help you talk about like this yeah. album and stuff yeah and you're the first guest on i know we talk it's pod. cool and I've never been on a podcast and i feel like you we have to say this at this point because we haven't said it yet Make sure after you watch this video to go stream Sweet Story of Mind, a deluxe album, out now, wherever you listen to music. Um, I will say uh, one more thing on the album's production. Mm-hmm. We're not done. Yeah. Um, the The album itself and the marketing for the album will continue to um, roll out for the next couple weeks until we mm-hmm. get started with the next era of music. But um, we have some ideas for music videos, and you know those take time and pre-production. Um, I, we're working on two wish we're working on two for the album and then mm-hmm. another music video for a different song so right. three if you do that if you do that math so I don't know when you're gonna get those um, there's also merch there's also merch I still gotta the, order mine the Wilmore shop.com I had the store ready to go back in 
September. I did. But I delayed it because I wasn't too happy with the merch. I wanted some more pretty, mm -hmm. aesthetically pleasing merch. And I think now we have a really good group. I'm going to keep yeah. adding to There's some... Especially I, for player cards. That is some cool freaking that. merch. And you got the new logo on that. I haven't even like officially announced the new logo, but you got the new logo on the merch. So um, go check it out. It's yeah. a good check it it's out. It's free to check it out. It's free to check it out. There's a bunch of cool stuff on there. It really is. Make sure to get you some Sweet Story of Mine slides. The Sweet Slides of Mine. Mm -hmm. but, <gasps> I forgot those were on there. That's hilarious. But I do want to say one more thing. When I had the idea for the podcast a couple uh, weeks ago, like officially kicking it off, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know what to call it. And I made a joke because it's always been a joke. And it's a, um, about everything I do. I say it's going to be sweet blank of mine. So I said, oh, what if I call it a sweet podcast of mine? And I was like, absolutely not. Or um, so, yeah. the someone came up with the actual I, name of the album. I, we were in this like the kind podcast. of we're film students, and so we were in this like computer lab where we edit and stuff. And so I was like behind him, and I kind of like you know pop up over the computers uh, over the computers, and I was like, "How about the sweet talking pod?" As a joke, and then I'm like, <laughs> "Well, that works." And I had that picture from the uh, deluxe album photo shoot of me sipping the, mm -hmm. the teacup. So I was like. No, 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 let's do this. Yeah. So I, I couldn't think of a better title, and I, I think it's going to be really fun going forward. As always, so as the show goes on, it'll always be a little nod to the, this body of work yeah. that I'm just super proud of and hope that the world will kind of drift to as time goes on. I think yeah. it's definitely going to pick up steam over time, and um, I think hopefully as my music grows, people kind of look back and they find some songs in the sound that they can connect with and vibe with. And um, But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. My name's Will. My name's Sam. And we're out. Why you gotta play your cards, trying to tear me apart?